All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So yesterday, after I left the car wash and I got home, I noticed that there's axle grease on the inside of the drum on this wheel, and it's all over that shock over there. And then I peeked under it, and I noticed that the whole axle shaft boot is ripped apart, and um, looks like it's pretty dry because even when I'm backing up or moving forward, you can hear a clunking noise coming from this side of suspension. So it's most likely gonna be the axle. So we're gonna take it to the shop. Um, I do have an axle laying around somewhere. We'll replace it. And then I'll tell you guys all the details on this if you're interested in buying it, the price, and who you can get a hold of uh, to buy it. And I also restocked on um, the SRT light up white and red airbags. So if you guys are interested in buying one of those, um, they are restocked on the website as well as the harnesses. Um, so make sure you get your order in. They do go pretty quick. And I only have probably five left in red and three in white. So change of plans, it turned out that I didn't have an axle um, at the shop. Well, I did have one, but it wasn't for a track hawk. It was off of a 5.7 and those are different. So I just want to pick one up. We're going to sell this new one and uh, get it back on the road. So I just left the shop, I got the axle fixed, and then literally, I didn't even make it down the block, um, and then three of these lights popped up. The traction light, uh, the adaptive cruise control, and the speed warning, all three of these. And on my radio, it won't let me change the stability control to any other mode. So right now it's a sport with the stability control staying in straight. Um, I've had the same exact problem with another Trackhawk, and it turned out to be the uh, transfer case. Because even now, if I'm trying to go like into a U-turn, I'll show you what it does. You know, I was worried about that when I first bought it because of the bigger wheels, the transfer case uh, will get blown out. But let's see. Let's see what it does. I'm trying to make this turn. It feels like it doesn't want to move when you come to a tight, tight angle. So right now I'm gonna turn the wheel, try to go. See how it stops by itself. Yeah, the transfer case is shot. Uh, but I'm gonna scan it. If it's giving me the same DTC, it's gonna say something like clutch worn. Uh, that's what it said on the other one. And then I gotta order a new transfer case from the dealer and put it in there. But um, I was not expecting that. That came out of nowhere. I was driving it for two days and it didn't have any issues. So maybe it just got worn out now. But yeah, we take it back to the house, uh, get it scanned up. I'll show you how to scan um, DTCs on these. If you don't have that special scanner that scans the gateway module, I'll show you how to bypass that and then you can clear these out um, with a regular snap-on or any scanner that you have. So once we get there, I'll show you how to do it. All right, so I made it to the garage. Uh, I'll pull about halfway through. It was 
lights are still on the dash. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to scan it if you have just a regular scanner, not one of the fancy ones that can read it through the, um, it's called the SGW module, security gateway module. And I don't have one of those either. I have an older Snap-on that, um, so 20, 2018 and up on the old Chrysler cars, the Dodge, Charger, Challenger, Durango 300s, all of those, 2018 and up, you can't read it. If you have a, just a regular scanner, you have to get one of these. Um, this is called a security gateway bypass cable. Oh, you could get these off of eBay, Amazon. It's like 40 bucks, but I'm gonna show you how to use it. I needed it when I had to scan all these cars. Um, well, first things first, this part will plug into your OBD, which is right there. And then this part will connect to your scanner. But you gotta get this into one of the communication plugs. Um, there's On the Jeeps, there's one over here, but it's hard to reach. And the other one, is over here let me show you how to get to it so this will plug up in here like that you can have to turn your ignition on but before i do that so that's how that looks now it's all gone we just west ended it cut all that glue off and it looks like new so on jeeps and durangos the the communication plug, you gotta pop this off, you gotta move the carpet down, and then it's over here. So you see one of those empty spaces, I'm gonna try to do it with one hand. You'll take your bypass and you'll plug it in to one of the empty plugs. Let her snap in there. Now you can scan the car or the truck. Okay, so now I turn the ignition on. Where's the key? Okay. Turn the ignition on. Scanner. Go under. What was that noise? So let me show you what it does if you don't have this plugged in. So I'm gonna unplug this. Disconnect that and then connect it directly to the car. Now, um, 2018s and up, track hawks are the same. Um, mine doesn't read over that, but we'll do manual, Grand Cherokee four wheel drive with a 6.2, and then hit OK. Uh, display fitted. Now, see, it's trying to connect to the SGW, and it says failed because I'm not bypassing it. So, let me show you how to get rid of that. Okay, now we'll bypass it and I'll show you that it works. This is a free game. Nobody teaches you this. Okay, now plug that. I'm gonna lock this thing up because it's gonna be annoying. Okay, now we'll go in scanner, do the same exact thing. And then it's not gonna have that failure code. Uh, 2018, manual, four wheel drive, 6.2, okay. Display. There you go, unable to communicate with it because I bypassed it so we could continue and I could, I could scan it. So what I'm gonna look for is the, uh, I went to the wrong one. I'm gonna look for is all fitted. Continue. And it's gonna be under drivetrain control module. That's where the cruise control sets codes or the transfer case under this over here. So DTCM. And if it has anything to do with a clutch, that means the transfer case is shot. Yep, I knew it. So that is the same exact code that I had on the other one. Uh, transfer case differential clutch warrant stored it's stored now that means the code the lights are off but then once you drive it it'll turn into an active code so i could clear it now because i bypassed the controller so now the codes should go away so it says no more codes but um i guarantee you once i drive it it's gonna come back on so we're gonna put a new uh a new transfer case in here um i'll buy one from the dealer i think the last one was like 1900 
and you gotta put on hoist and uh, take the exhaust off, take the drive shafts off. This is hard to do with one hand. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean, everything else is fixed. There's no more grease shooting out of this thing. That's old right there. But the barrel, I cleaned the barrel when I took the wheel off and um, it looks brand new now. All right, so I'm gonna put everything back together. Um, I kind of figured that was gonna be the issue. Like I said, I had a transfer case on another Trackhawk that went bad with the same exact code that I just read on this one. So in the meantime, I'm gonna be ordering a transfer case, should have that in a couple days, and install it on this one. And then whoever's gonna buy it is gonna get a truck with a brand new transfer case. Honestly, good thing I caught it now. I didn't want to sell it. And if somebody else gets caught up with it, it is a pretty expensive fix. The transfer case alone is like two grand and then Obviously, plus the time and labor you got to put into this. So, um, I, I will still give you guys the details on it. It's a 2021 Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. This one has the red seatbelts. It does have the uh, leather and suede seats. Um, no sunroof, but probably has like everything else. It does have the upgraded Harman Kardon sound system. Um, does have the tow package. It does have the tow package. Uh, this one will come with this uh, Sundown Audio sound system. This thing sounds amazing. I'm going to give you guys a quick here. I don't want to play for too long for copyright does have a mid muffler delay it sounds real good so see now the lights went away but i guarantee you when you drive it it's gonna it's gonna come back on so have you guys hear this for a second i shut off the parking sensors but they do work with the lane assist i just keep them off uh, but let me have you guys hear the sound system real quick. I mean, this thing bangs. It sounds real good. Even the inside speakers, like the ones on the doors and the one on the dash, those have to be upgraded because it sounds really loud. It sounds really good. And that's not even turned up all the way. There's a controller in here. So we see what that is on minimum. And I'm telling you, this thing shakes the whole freaking glass and the trunk and everything. And that's not even turned up all the way. Um, everything for the sound system is hitting underneath the spare. Um, I took it off when I had to figure out, because when I first got it, the keyless entry wasn't working. So this thing and this wasn't working. Obviously it is now. So it turned out there was an antenna that was cut when they were installing this, so I had to fix it. And I seen that old uh, amplifier, the fuses, and everything else was headed underneath the spare. This one will come with a full-size spare as well. It has the Trackhawk decals on the side. It has a Trackhawk underneath the doors. It's really neat, like it all flows together. Red calipers, the 26 inch uh, 4G autos, those will come with the truck. Uh, the Trackhawk badges. It all flows well. Um, I'm asking 80,000 for this with the wheels. Um, the wheels alone are probably worth over five grand for sure. Um, just hit over 15,000 miles. I bought it with 14, high 14s. The tire light is on obviously because of the wheels, but um, it drives perfectly fine other than the issue with the transfer case, but I'm gonna get that fixed for you guys. Uh, at, at first I wasn't doing any type of financing and I still don't, but if you have your own credit union or your own bank that will offer you financing, then you could uh, text my assistant, he'll send you the VIN number and like a purchase agreement. And then you could take that to your bank or your credit union and they can uh, finance it for you. And then they'll just write you a check to bring to me. So that's, uh, that's it for today. So that is gonna be it for today's video, guys. Um, this was unexpected. I thought I was gonna go fix the axle, come back. I'll give you guys a quick drive. And that was gonna be it. Oh, the hood is still open. But it's part of the game, man. That's what happens when you buy cars off auction. Not every single time things are gonna be perfect, but could have been worse. Uh, it is fully stock, not even an intake on this thing. It's not tuned. It is absolutely stock. Um, that's uh, that's it. So hope you guys enjoyed. I'm gonna leave the information for the uh, for the contact if you guys want to reach out to somebody to uh, to buy this thing. And it's gonna be a cell phone number. Just text it only. Do not call because nobody will pick up. And I'm gonna be having a few more cars come again, and we'll do the same thing. I'll show you guys. I like doing this because you see how I buy it, so you're not really asking too many questions of how I look before. I like buying these things because it's a lot better than buying one that's wrecked. I mean, all the paint's original, uh, no frame damage, none of the airbags are deployed. It was a simple uh, theft and recovery, and that was it.
Um, so that's going to be it for today's video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. Hit that like button, and I'll see you back on the next one.